All right, so what is really the best way to figure out whether or not the example that you're given is a simple random sample? The best way to think about it is think about using the hat method. So if you could throw everybody's name in a hat and they would have equal chances of being selected, then you know that it's a simple random sample in something instead of something else. So for example, um, if we were to write all 20 names of students on identical pieces of paper, put it in a hat, mix it well, pull out slips of papers until you have 10 of them. So another way you could do this is you could number everyone in the class from 0, 1 to 20. Just note that those are the same length, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, two digits. So then once you get to 10, you're continuing with two digits. Put the 20 numbers on identical pieces of paper, put them in a hat, Mix it well and then pull out the slips of paper until you have 10 of them. So when you're deciding, when you're writing how to conduct a simple random sample, some keys are making sure that you write identical pieces of paper, you're putting it in a hat, and then make sure you're mixing it well, um, and that allows for the randomness to occur. Now, there's another way that you'll see how to do simple random samples, and that is through technology. All right, so how do we do this using technology? Very, very similar to the hat method. You'll have a table of random digits or random integer table. It's just a long string of numbers from zero to nine. Basically, each entry in the table is equally likely to occur, or equally likely to be any of the numbers from zero to nine. Each entry is independent of each other, and that basically tells us that one, knowing one number before it doesn't impact the number after it. Okay, so how do we choose a simple random sample using a random integer table? Like I said, just think of it as a long string of single digit numbers. So one, you always want to label it. So you're going to give each member of the population a numerical label of the same length. So for example, you would say every, if there's 20 students in the class, we're going to label the 20 students 0, 1 through 20. So everyone would have 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, so on and so forth, up to 20. You're going to read consecutive groups of digits of the appropriate length. So that just means that that since we labeled everyone from 0, 1 to 20, you're going to read the digits in groups of two. So you'd read every group of two. Your sample contains the individuals whose labels that you find in the sample. So if you read 0, 1, 0, 5, the person that's labeled 0, 1 and 0, 5 are the people in your sample. All right, so just a couple of tips. Number one, when you are describing your assigned numbers, just make sure they're the same length. So if you have to go to 10, you can go 0, 1 through 10. Make sure it's a 0, 1 and not just 1 because 1 through 9 is going to be a length of 1. 10 is a length of 2. Or you can use 0 to 9 because that's still 10 digits if you count 0. But don't use 1 to 10 or even 90 to 100. So think about 90 to 100. 90 is two digits, 100 is three digits. They have to be the same length, so you would have to label it 0, 9, 0, and then the next one would be 0, 9, 1, 0, 9, 2, up to 100 if you're going to do it that way. Okay, you always want to make sure you think about numbers that are going to be skipped or discarded. Most likely, you won't use 0, 0 or repeated numbers. Okay, so if you're choosing people from a sample, you're not going to use repeated numbers because if Susie is 0, 1 and 0, 1 is chosen twice, we can't have her twice in the sample. So you discard repeated numbers when you're choosing individuals. So when you're using a table, you also want to specify what line you're starting at. Um, tables are always labeled like line 101, 102. So you're going to say start at line 107 and record every three integers. So three integers means you've um, assigned the numbers like 100 to 150. So 100 would be a person, 101 would be a person. And then you're going to state the integers you've selected. So you're going to say the people in our sample are 100, 122, and 135. Okay, and then finally, you're going to make sure you state the names of those selected. So even though you've said we've, we're choosing person 101, 125, 135, you want to state who they were, Susie, Johnny, and Bill. Okay, so just make sure that you include that as part of your description. All right, so there is also a way to use your calculator. Please make sure that you go to the calculator section on Blackboard to learn how your graphing calculator can also produce a simple random sample. Now, make sure when you understand that when you're using the graphing calculator, you're often going to get repeats. You have to be able to state, like, ignore the repeats or don't ignore repeats. Um, sometimes you'll ignore repeats and sometimes you won't. 
Why, when would you not ignore repeats? Let's just say we were um, rolling a dice and we'll think we'll, and we're labeling the numbers one through six and we are randomly generating numbers one through six. So we're not going to ignore repeats in that case because we're basically counting how many ones there are, how many twos there are, etc. Okay, but when we're doing a sample, you can't have the same person twice. So you're going to make sure whether or not you're going to ignore repeats. And then with a graphing calculator, you're going to state we're going to find random integers until we get n different or say five different numbers from 100 to 150. So it you will, if you're asked to describe this on the AP exam, you will lose credit if you fail to address what to do with repeated labels. So you have to state ignore repeats or do not ignore repeats. So for example, we're going to label each student from 1 to 22 digits. We're going to generate numbers on your graphing calculator. Notice how it has six different digits. Be sure to ignore repeated numbers. All right, now, once again, make sure you understand that that doesn't say 1 to 20. It's two digits, 0, 1 to 20. All right, so what I'd like you to do is take a second and try this one. Um, the school newspaper is planning on an article on family-friendly places to stay in the Jersey Shore. The editors want to call four randomly chosen hotels to ask about their amenities for families with children. Now, what I'd like you to do is describe how you can find a simple random sample of four hotels, specifically using a random integer table, if they've taken and labeled each of the hotels with numbers. Notice that the same length. Aloha Kai is 0, 1, and Veranda 2 is 28. So they're all two digits. So go ahead and take a minute and try that. Hit the pause button and then check the next slide for the answer. All right, so let's see how they did. So in this case, we um, have line one of our random number, ta number table. Now notice how the directions say start at the left side of line one. So we're starting over here. Over here. We're telling the reader how we're going to read the digits. Read every two digits until you've chosen a simple random sample of four hotels. So they're specifically stating how many digits you're choosing. Now, notice this is only addressing the numbers 1 through 28, but we start out with number 69. So you're going to have numbers in the random number table that are not within the bounds that you've chosen. So you have to tell the reader what to do with those. Number one, we're telling the reader to ignore repeats because we don't want to call the same hotel twice. That's not going to give us a very good read. And we don't, we want to ignore everything that's not between one and 28. Okay, so that's really specific. Just make sure if you handed this to your mom, dad, brother, sister, they could read it and be like, oh, I can do that. Okay, don't assume that they know anything about statistics. All right, so here's how our sample works. Now we have just taken this table and divided it into groups of two. Okay, if you want to, I kind of underline them often. I think that that helps. So after we've divided them into groups of two, we can state which numbers work. Okay, 5 and 16 were 1, 48 wasn't, 17 is, 87 is not. Okay, ooh, think about this. Why are these 17s not chosen? Because we're ignoring the repeats. All of these numbers are outside of my range until I get to 20. All right, so here's my four hotels. Then make sure you state what the hotels actually are. So we've chosen Beach Castle, Radisson, the Ramada, and the Sea Globe. Okay, so number one, a couple important things that I went over on the previous slide to earn full credit on the AP exam. Hotel labels need to be the same length. Where did you start? At the left-hand side. How many digits did you read together? Specifically every two digits. How many are you gonna choose? We're choosing four because we had a simple random sample of four. We're ignoring repeats because in this case, it doesn't really make sense to use the same hotel twice. It's not giving us a good idea. And then what was your final outcome? So the numbers that you chose and the names associated with the hotel. All right, so go ahead and try this one. Hit pause and then take a look at the answer. Okay, so that's how it should have read. Two digits where you're starting. You're reading every two digits to get a simple random sample of three stores. Ignore repeats and anything outside your range of 1 to 21 because there were 21 stores here. Um, you should have gotten 7, 19, and 14. Okay. All right. So 
The basic idea of sampling is straightforward. You're taking a simple random sample from the population. We're using the sample results to gain information about the population. So this can often be hard because making sure that your random sample is large enough to make sure that's a good representation of the population um, using the hat method can be consuming. So it is time consuming. If we want a simple random sample of all the high school students, getting all the names of every high schooler in the United States, A, is going to take a long time and it's going to be very difficult and costly. All right, so there are going to be some other more complex sampling methods that will give us just an advantage of over the simple random sample because they're not as time consuming and they won't um, cost quite as much money. So one common alternative to a simple random sample involves sampling important groups called strata. So strata are basically like taking the population and putting them into groups that already exist. All right, these are basically subsamples and they're combined to form one stratified random sample. So I know that might sound confusing, but on the next slide, let's see what that looks like. All right, so stratified random sample. So we're putting the population into groups or strata. All right, so think about that high school problem. If we were to take every single high schooler from every single high school, okay, that might not be good. But if we separate it into strata, each high school could be considered a strata. It might be easier to compile a list of all of the high schools in the United States than every single student. Each of those naturally occurring groups, each high school is a strata, it's like a group, okay? Then what you would do is you would take, so it's like two parts. First, you look at the naturally occurring groups, all right? Then you take a simple random sample from each strata and combine all of these to form a full sample. So if you had 10 high schools, you'd have a few students, you take a simple random sample of high school one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So your final sample would be a simple random sample from each of the 10 high schools, okay? Now, when you do this, basically, basically you're grouping individuals by similar characteristics. That's our strata. Then within each strata, you take a simple random sample. So think about bins. You're sort of putting people into bins naturally occurring bins, and then take a simple random sample from each bin, your final group is gonna have individuals from each strata. And there's usually in this case, um, the stratas are similar. So like high school one and high school two might be different, but maybe everyone in high school one is similar to high school two, or they have similar characteristics in high school one, and then high school two has similar characteristics to itself, high school three. So in the end, you have characteristics from each of the 10 high schools within your sample. Now, how is this different? With a simple random sample, instead of having 10 different bins or 10 different high schools, all of those high school students will be thrown into one giant bin. All right, so everyone would get a number and get be picked. There would, you wouldn't be divided into smaller groups, okay? Just keep in mind that strata, stratas are naturally occurring groups. You're not gonna create a strata, they're already there. All right, so how does this, what does it exactly does this look like? So let's take a look at choosing a simple a sample of high school students in Virginia. So choose the strata based on facts known before the sample is taken. So basically what you're doing is you're, that's basically like saying, okay, we're going to find the strata that's already naturally occurring. So we're gonna choose the strata to be the various counties in Virginia. So there's 95 counties, 95 naturally occurring counties. From each county, we're gonna take a simple random sample of five high schools. So think about 95 bins. Then in each of those 95 bins, I'm gonna take a simple random sample of five, okay? And then within each of the high schools, I'm gonna take 10 students. This is multi-stage sampling. Um, this is sort of two different methods. So first you look at the naturally occurring 95 counties, then you have five high schools, okay? And then from each of those five high schools, I'm gonna choose 10 students. So to figure out how many you'd have, okay, you're gonna take 95 times five high schools, times 10 students, okay? All right, so the two strata here are the counties and the high school. With a simple random sample, I would just take all the high schools in Virginia, give them each a number, and pull 4,750 students' names out. So the difference here is, now this is making sure that I'm getting a good representation from each county. All right, although a stratified random sample can sometimes be more precise, so it's making ensuring that we have um, people from each of the stratas in our sample, both sampling methods are 
often hard when the populations are large or spread out over a wide area. So in this situation, we'd prefer a method that selects groups of individuals that are near each other. So the next one we're going to take a look at is a cluster sample. So once again, a cluster sample divides the population into groups. The clusters mirror the characteristics of the population. Then you choose a simple random sample of the clusters and all individuals in the chosen cluster are included in the sample. And on the next slide, we'll go over what this looks like.